I wasn't actually going to do anything today, but then I thought you might like a video. <laughs> fort? Like, because there's forts in, in the game. Because the it's a play on... <laughs> it's a play on words, so it's... <laughs> it's, uh, it's like, uh... It's, it's, uh, it's, it's comedy. Hey, you beautiful buccaneers, Falcor here. So you've likely all delved into the new forts, a new feature added in the first half of season six. You're probably doing one right now, so I'll just keep talking as you battle through the ways of minions and your avenge- uh oh. Oh, you finished it. Jokes aside, the new forts are a treat for the eyes and a fun little thing to do, but not exactly the main course of content we were looking for. More like the biscuit you get with some coffee shops. You know the one I mean. Is it is it vanilla or is it ginger? No one knows. But aside all that, the forts have come with quite a bit of foreshadowing for where the adventures could take us in future updates. But first, a little backstory as to why they are here. During the Pirate's Life Tall Tales, Mr. Squidface and Pirate Mickey Mouse tangled with the forces of the Sea of the Damned, and the only way for us to sort out their mess was for Calypso to open the doorways to the Sea of the Damned, where we could explore for once as the living, and not the dead. During our travels, we came face to face with spectral enemies, trapped in a state of memory from the Spanish Armada. However, Davy Jones and the Dark Brethren failed, but other eyes on the seas were watching, and decided to use these portals for their own agenda. Flameheart Senior and his son, known as the Servant of Flame, ventured into these portals and recruited the Spanish memories to serve them, and also to break down the walls between the Sea of the Damned and the real world. They summoned forth Soulflame captains from the Chests of Wondrous Secrets, which we found out were essentially portals to the Sea of the Damned itself. Killing the Soul Flame captains played into Flameheart's plans, and as a result, the walls between the Sea of the Damned and the Sea of Thieves was cracked, and the Spanish forces were able to bring forth their forts. But why? What purpose does this serve? Within the forts scattered around the Sea of Thieves, there are several hints as to what the Spanish Phantoms are doing. They appear to be ransacking the Sea of Thieves for vital information or treasures, such as Mercy's End Fort that holds paintings of the Sea Dogs Tavern. Since the closure of Arena, the Sea Dogs are packing up shop and have a lot to say about it. I'll save this story arc for a future video, but within the Sea Dogs Tavern, these pictures could be seen hanging. But why would they need these pictures? It's possible that they stole them just because they want to put them on eBay or something. But it could also be preluding to the fact that something bigger is going to occur with the Sea Dogs in the future. But as I said, more of that in a future video. But this isn't the only thing they appear to be ransacking. Within the Imperial Crown Treasury on a small table is this note with arcane symbols what appears to be the depiction of three cannonballs and a signature from M. Salty. Now, more about that in a moment, but down at the aptly named Traitor's Fate Fortress, a secondary pirate code can be found that reads, Surrender the outposts, bow to Captain Warsmith, all hail Flameheart. Warsmith is in fact the masked stranger, a person who was once loyal to Flameheart, but betrayed him after finding out Flameheart was using her for her knowledge of warsmithing skills and nothing more. She is now part of the Dark Brethren, along with the Gold Hoarder and Duke. The same pirate code can be found at her lair, hidden within Wanderer's Refuge. The Warsmith was the one who constructed the Cursed Cannibals, an agenda that Flameheart set her on to take over the Sea of Thieves. And going back to the letter we can see in the Imperial Crown Fort, the letter signed Salty is in fact her old accomplice, who was once human and helped her construct these cursed weapons using the metal found from the Burning Blade remains, which was Flameheart's flagship. Now, tie this in with the last adventure cinematic where we see Wanda obviously being abducted from Golden Sands, Wanda being the sister of the Warsmith, and we can put this all together. Flameheart is searching for a way to construct the Cursed Cannonballs once again, possibly for his fleet. Now, a few of you who are more versed in the game's lore might be thinking, 
But he has Red Ruth. She also made cursed cannonballs. This is true, but the Warsmith was the one who perfected them, made many different kinds. Red Ruth probably just made a singular kind, and it could also be referring to the firebombs. The abduction of Wanda, the attack at Golden Sands, the notes, the aptly named forts and their locations all point towards the Spanish forces helping Flameheart find the recipe for these curses. Which means, I have no doubt, we'll see the Dark Brethren emerge once more in the future. And the Warsmith will not be happy at all that her prized possessions and knowledge are being used for her former ruler's agenda. But there is also one other possibility. Maybe not all of these forts are under the control of Flameheart. <laughs>